Worldwide Jets, Worldwide Mets. On The Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. All right, y'all, so I know I tease Diddy, but because I don't want to be wrong, mm-hmm. because they always say I'm wrong, Okay, I, I wanted to get a lot more time to get the situation all under, you know, under wraps. Makes sense. So, that stay tuned for that in the seven hour. But right now, social media <laughs> reacts to Andre 3000. So, he was playing at a jazz festival over the weekend in Atlanta. I didn't know that it was an actual jazz festival. Mm. I thought he was up there with, like, real pros. Like, it's a festival. Mm-hmm. And so, when I heard it, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. That's his concert. whole time, this man was playing at a jazz festival. What's crazy is the audio. And the reason why I'm stressing it mm-hmm. is the festival is because it got to be a little bit better. This is what he did. Can't kill it now. All yeah, right. That's the sound at the, the festivals, clearly. The acoustics was messed up. It sounded like they need a better sound system. Yeah, I understand. One person <laughs> said, on understand. social media uh, said, never listen to rap fans about what jazz should sound like. Andre just needs better acoustics. So to Charlemagne point, that's what somebody said. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard jazz mm-hmm. live before. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, acoustics definitely matters. I mean, it's a wide open space. You outside, you know, it's a festival. But... I have heard like real live jazz festivals before mm-hmm. with not really great acoustics and it was it was better than that. Meanwhile, another person compared to his uh performance p- compared his performance to the episode of Martin where Hustle Man attached uh his kazoo to the sex the saxophone. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it sounded oh, oh, oh. bad. Was he the only one that sounded like that, or was the, his performance just like that, or did everybody that was performing that night the acoustics pretty bad? Listen, they only shadowed him, mm. so I, that's the point. Yeah, and the, the other problem is it is a jazz show. I, I, they do that show every year, but mm-hmm. he's not up there doing jazz. Mm-hmm. Like I've been to an Andre 3000 flute show. I went to Andre 3000 show where he was playing the flute. I loved mm-hmm. every minute of it. The sound was great. They had a light show. They had the smoke going in the building. Mm-hmm. And y'all Negroes don't deserve words. Mm-hmm. But was there everything? Damn, calm down. Was <laughs> it? Was there anything else besides the flute, though? No, it's an Andre 3000 flute show. I know, but did he have any other anything else planned? Like, cause oh, he had a album, band. He, he had a band a, with him. Yeah, he had yeah, the yeah, band yeah, with him. So band. I feel like yeah. he could have had other people. Mm-hmm. You know, he could have had his band out there. It was just him playing the flute. He just pulled up. Yeah, he just pulled up with the flute, went up there, sat in a chair, and just did his thing. Did, did he get booed or no? No, 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 uh, no, no, nobody booed him. Um, what makes the whole thing funny is that in an interview with CBS, uh, CBS Mornings, Dre, uh, he admitted that he just be going with the flow when he plays, so that's what he mm-hmm. said. Like, I don't even know what notes I'm playing, so <laughs> everything, every move for me is new, which is kind of crazy, but it feels yeah. great to do it because when you find things, you're like, oh, it's like a, a reward for yeah. searching. So when you're comparing it to jazz, <laughs> I guess, okay, it's like, uh, but it's a feeling to him. He said he don't really it's know what he does. It's a vibe. You got to go yeah. see it when he does it live, man. There's mm-hmm. one, I don't want to tell the show, because I don't know if this is part of his show, because like he said, he go with the flow, but there was one part of the show where he, he just started it. going, <laughs> he just started going, and the audience was reacting to it, and he goes, I ain't say nothing just now. I just made all that. <laughs> See? <laughs> but he had y'all in the vibe. It was a vibe. I loved it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you was probably the main one acting like you knew what he said. <laughs> the only thing I wish, I wish one thing at his show. What? Right. I wish I was high. Oh, uh, you the, wasn't high? No, the lights was going and the, yeah. the smoke was going mm. and the flute had just a nice peaceful vibe. Mm. Like, you, I was zoned out. But that was more intimate, though, wasn't it? That wasn't yes. like a big, fe- nah, you know, nah, so nah, I feel nah. like things like Festivals that outside, should side, be. Yeah. yeah, flute show was definitely intimate. You got to come high, get in the vibe. You, you know what high. I'm saying? That's what's up. Yeah, All do right. yourself a favor and go see Andre 3000 uh, show if you can. Yeah. It's the, it's, what is it called? The Blue... I can't remember right now. The New Blue Sun Tour. That's what it's called. Nice. New Blue Sun Tour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Snoop Dogg thanks Kendrick and Drake during an episode. Um, no, during a recent appearance on Entertainment Tonight, Snoop Dogg was asked how he felt about the beef between Drake and Kendrick, and this is what he had to say. I want to give both of them a shout out for raising the bar 
as far as lyrics, as far as song making and writing, because the writing has been upped since the confrontation or whatever you call it, whatever they went through. Those are my nephews. I'm not in the middle of it. I support both of them, and that's personal business, not my business. But as far as what they did for the industry and the rap game, they made you rap again. Mm -hmm. Can't just mumble your way and gimmick your way to a song no more, buddy. Mm -hmm. So thank y'all. And I do agree with that. Like yep. he did definitely. You know, Maybe they, people look at lyrics. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. They went from balls to allegations. So yeah, they I disagree with all y'all. What yeah. you mean? You did? There'll be a mumbling rapper popping right now. Y'all be in <laughs> y'all was in the club this weekend listening to mad mumbling rappers. Knock it off. You was? I, no, I you wasn't, wasn't, but I'm sure mad club. people were. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, what are we talking? Like, yeah, yeah, but people are looking in the lyrics, though. They look yeah. in the lyrics. They've yeah. never looked away from lyrics. They just like the mumble rap too. I don't know why we act mm -hmm. like the two can't coexist. They to be one, but yeah. they dissected Kendrick and Drake a lot more than they usually do with any rapper. That's yeah. not. I mean, because it was a, it was disses, so they were yeah. listening, but they weren't listening for lyrics. They were listening for the T. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Don't say T like if that. I, if I tell you right now, tell me one of the Drake or Kendrick's most fire bars. What what, what you what would you say? A minor. Hey, see what I'm saying? Oh my God, that's just too early. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you listen to something like Meet the Grams, Kendrick was really snapping. If you listen yep. to something like Family Matters, Drake was yeah. really snapping. Like they, they were really yep. saying some dope ass bars. People don't remember that. They remember the T. No, I like the colonizer line. Like when he broke it down, he hard. named all the rappers and how he was making that, that last them for verse money. On, yeah, that last yeah. verse that on was Not crazy. Like Us. Yes. Not Like Us. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then, oh, dang. Well, Snoop Dogg wife, she's opening up a strip club. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be called The Players Club, y'all. It's, it's the grand opening that takes place this week. DJ Drama will be on the set along with DJ Sky. Hi, baby. And um, guest, guest appearances are. Uh, Tiffany Haddish, Too Short, Big Boy, and Cedric the Entertainer. So congratulations yeah, to congrats. Boss Lady Entertainment, Shantae Brodus. That's right. Drop on a clue, Mom, Shantae Brodus. That's what's up. It's going to be called Players Club. I know mm -hmm. that's right. Oh, and the carpet is going to be blue. Like, ain't no red carpet. We knew that, though. I yeah, love when your pregnancy blue. brain kick in during the middle of the story because <laughs> it'd be pregnancy brain and a little bit of hate because you pregnant and you want to go to the club. And you uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking at it like, damn, why am I talking about something that's I can't crazy. attend right now? Yeah, so... That's just for the mess for the first hour. Thank you, Jess. Now, when we come back, Morgan Wood has front page news, so don't go anywhere. And then don't forget uh, Monica McNutt, basketball analyst for ESPN, will be joining us at The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.